Now that we have a good camera, I can actually show you where it's leaking from. There's a bracket right there, and it's leaking just to the right of that bracket. You see that little white spot? That's where it's leaking from. Just a teeny, 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 tiny leak. So now I've got to figure out how to take apart this vehicle, how to get the radiator out, which is going to be fun. So I'm going to teach you how to do it so you don't have to pay some dude to do it too. So first step, obviously, is going to be let the car cool down. Second, take the cap off the radiator. Third, drain the fluid, which I've already done. Take off the grill, and to do that, they have these little clips. It's easier with two flathead screwdrivers, one on this side, one on this side, and you'll lift up, and they'll pop up like that. Then you can grab it, pull up, and the uh, piece will come out. And then you get up under it again, and the whole whole thing comes up. And you'll need to do that five times. One over here, one here, one there, one there, and one there. On your engine latch, look down in here, and you'll see that tab right by the silver. You need to push that upwards, and there's, uh, I think, five of them that go along the bottom of the grill. You lift those up and the grill will come out. Refer to my how to remove uh, grill on a 2012 journey video to take this off. So the next is gonna be unhooking the actual cooling system. So this is the upper radiator hose. This is on the passenger side of the engine and it's gonna be just this clamp here. Unclamp that, undo it, and it'll twist right off. All right, upper radiator hose is off. In your many tools, find a 10 millimeter or a crescent wrench. Since I can't find my 10 mil, this is what I'm using. Take the horn off. It's not going to be too tight, so you can just that and then loosen it by hand, and then yell at it because this vehicle is only five years old. It shouldn't have a leak like this. Take the bracket off, and we're going to unplug it and set it aside. I'm going to put the screw back in here because if not, I will lose it, and I don't want to lose it. Just so I can have more room to work, and I think because I need to get to that lower radiator hose, I removed the air box it's sitting right there. So to pull out your air box, you have a flathead screw right there that will take that out. There's a hose right here you take off, and there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. Undo all those. There's four screws. You can refer to my air filter video to take this out, but there's one, two, three, and four Phillips screws that you need to take out and then this whole air box piece will come out and then the lower air box piece the lower air box piece is connected by this 10 mil and it'll just pull out by itself uh, no other screws required I need to take the washer fluid reservoir out um, just so I can have more room to work down here because I am not gonna have enough room to work if if I don't do that all right I'm sure these steps aren't necessary but what I did was I unplugged the windshield wiper fluid checker reservoir anyway undid that it leaked pissed fluid everywhere but it's just washer fluid so I don't care uh, unplugged this and there's two cables that run up here that's just for the washer fluid right here and undid those and then looks like there's two eight millimeter bolts holding the reservoir in all right with the washer reservoir out we now have access to the lower radiator hose which is right here I couldn't get the bottom radiator hose off at the radiator, so I undid it right there, and that seemed to work fine. Um, it was a little harder getting the hose out, but not a big deal. So you have to take out the transmission coolers, and before you take the AC compressor condenser radiator off, you have to undo the transmission cooler line, which is three bolts. One right here, one right there, and one on this side. So you have to take those bolts out, and you have to undo the transmission cooler lines, which I've already done. They're right back here. It's just two little... I used a crescent wrench right there and right there. Undo those, and then those come out looking like this. See how it's all cockeyed? It's supposed to be sitting flat this way. So you have to, like, maneuver it up and pull it out, kind of. Um, after that, the radiator and AC condenser radiator separate right here you just it's a little pinch tab and then right on this side it's another little pinch tab and you pull these apart 
pull these two apart and pull the AC AC radiator out. And then at that point on the back here, there's little clips right there. And there's another one on this side right there. You undo that, pull the radiator forward, and it should come out just in one piece. So we're back in the installation process. And I've got, you do all that in reverse. I've got the radiator in, I've got the AC radiator in, I've got the transmission cooler lines um, ran, and right now I'm just tightening the uh, AC right now. Alright, transmission cooler lines are back in, and now it's time to mount the transmission cooler. And it's just, you lift it up here, there's three bolts, one on this side, two on this side, and they're uh, 10 millimeter. Alright, time to remount the horn. Just goes right here. And a little hook in the top that goes in that hook right there. One bolt, and then plug it in. You can put the uh, latch back on. This is the hood latch. And it's only two bolts. I undid mine for ease of access. Uh, these two bolts right here go into those two slots right there, the top ones. And um, try to get it as centered as you can, otherwise it won't be adjusted correctly for the, the hood to latch. All right, time for the washer reservoir to go back in. You'll need to hook up your lower radiator hose down there, your upper radiator hose, which is up here. Once you've done all that, I did lose just a tiny bit of transmission fluid out of the transmission cooler, but to avoid that, you can plug it up. That way you won't have to add transmission fluid in. All right, once, you're, once your air box is in, everything's hooked up, you can put your grill back on, but just to make sure there's no leaks or anything, probably start it without the grill on. Once you have all your hoses and everything hooked up, cars put back together, don't forget to fill your radiator bottle with fluid. So right here it says cold fill on the side. And it's actually, as you can see, it's cold. Um, it's a little bit low. So I need to add a little more to mine. Uh, there's going to be air pockets here and there that uh, you'll need to just keep an eye on this so that you make sure you have enough fluid in there. Make sure you fill up the radiator in the reservoir before you start the vehicle. But after you get all that put together, it should be all done and uh, should be good to go.